Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is Zach with Zach Attack Cards, bringing you another exciting card show recap and review, specifically for you, all my friends out there. So this was another show, as I said, on the last couple that I've done now, there's shows almost every weekend. I know we're right up to the national. This will be, I mean, this is national week. It opens at the end of this week. Unfortunately, I won't be going, so I've been going to some local card shows the past couple of weeks to kind of make up for it, and hopefully the pickups have been pretty darn good. I mean, uh, hopefully. They, I think the pickups have been pretty darn good. Uh, this one is a little different than what you may have seen from me in the past, so just a little bit of a teaser. We're going to have some vintage but there's some real nice pickups here. There's a lot of value. I mean, everything here with the exception of the Judge are value box pickups. Uh, the Judge I just thought was a was a nice pickup for, for the cost. Once again, we will go over the entire cost, the entire value, as well as the number one valued card out of the entire lot. So without further ado, let's get right into that. So beginning to bump up my vintage collecting a little bit more. So this was a fantastic way to kind of kick that off. Uh, let's start with all these. We're going to have some really cool inserts at the end. Kicking it off with a Wilson Contreras rookie, Bowman's Best. Once again, as I've said before, the, the more expensive the product, definitely look for the cards in the value box because... I mean, first of all, it's the easiest way to get them without buying those ridiculously expensive uh, products. And they're also going to have a little more value than, you know, say your standard Bowman rookie of, of Wilson Contreras, if that's what you're looking to do. We got a Gary Sheffield rookie. Not too shabby here. This is the standard, not the error S's. As you'll, you'll notice that something we're going to go ahead and keep that out because there's something interesting coming up kyle schwarber rookies once again uh these cards were in like a 25 cent bin 50 cents uh, i figured why not Taryn vavra rookie on the o's grab the rainbow foil a couple nolans 1982 i believe on this guy and 84 on one on the left, sharp though. Corners are in pretty nice shape. I was I was pretty surprised. And we have a Leaf Rod Carew, also a nice card from 1985. And then, as you guys know, I do plenty of. I put these in the wrong one. I also like to do inserts. You know, from the late 2000s, early or uh, late 90s, early 2000s. So here's a Hitting Machines Chipper Jones from Fleer Ultra. Very nice, 2001 it looks like. Sammy Sosa of the Hall of Gold, score 96 insert, slamming Sammy. We have some Hit Parade from Tops. Once again, Sammy, look at that really cool background where you can see hits, RBI, you know, everything kind of light up as the light hits it. He is number, he, well, he was number two on the active career home run leaders to Barry Bonds at the time. Uh, I love looking at stuff like that, too. Like, I find that to be really cool. Tops owned the game. They had this for a number of years. This was their, their kind of big insert. So, Gary Sheffield and Manny Ramirez. Once again, really nice foil. You know, not... Uh, could definitely have a few less scratches and things like that but it's one of those things where if i find some down the road or something i'll replace them but for now they just look really cool and they're just for my collection anyways now we're getting into the kid as i've said in some previous videos i've begun a collection of the kid this is his stadium club card that i just think is really cool hanging out with his dad from what was it just two years ago yeah 22. we have a griffey all-star pinnacle nice stuff pinnacle always made nice stuff back in the day so it's really no different we have a stadium club ken griffey jr we have on deck with griffey just kind of hanging out <laughs> head on his hands type of deal and this is another low-key really nice set leaf 
from 93. So nothing too special on the front. Check out the back though. Love that they put the cityscapes on the back. So one of those really cool ones that I enjoy picking up when I find them uh, of the right players, of course. A member's choice from Stadium Club. And these, these are relatively in, well, I was going to say in chronological order, but they're definitely not because we're getting to his White Sox card here, which was definitely towards the very end of his career, 2009. Then you have Fleer Authentics. Looks a lot like a ticket. That was the whole appeal of that set. Just another national pastime in Griffey. Standard card in the set. Love this set, this card here. This seems like such a nice, clean card. Very awesome look to it. Ken Griffey Jr. on the Mariners. Much later in his career. This was, uh, I think, when he was wrapping things up. 2009. We have an SPX of Griffey. Once again, another kind of higher-end brand from back in the day. Upper Deck National Baseball Card Day entry from 2006. Back when they did National Baseball Card Day cards and lastly this is i believe an insert right yes faces of the game can Griffey jr all from like i said i think it was a 50 cent bin if you picked up a whole bunch he gave you a deal and these all came from there they're kind of sticking cal you know for 50 cents i'll pick up some of his stuff you know beyond his playing days uh, not super wild about the the donruss one but you know, the Fleer is definitely nice. That one's only a year or so after it, right? Yeah, well, 2006, so about five years. We have Cal here for the All-Stars. What is that? Fan favorites. Kind of looks a lot like his 2001 tops, but looks like it was produced in 2005. Pretty cool, though. Kind of a fake out there, I guess. Might have even got me at the time. And a leather and lumber from Donruss. This is also after his playing days, 2005. Once again, just something I thought was cool. Playoff honors from 2004. Fleer Futures. Cal Ripken Jr. from 2001. So now we're into his, the end of his playing days. And we have Donruss 2001. And there's Cal from also 2000. Or wait, this, this should have been 2001. This is 2000, nice highlights card. The upper deck, got the weird all-star game insignia on it. Uh, it was one of those things where I think it could be, uh, you know, a Mandela effect or whatever. I, I just, the all-star game thing looked a little odd. I wasn't sure if that was on every card or if maybe that was a special insignia. So I know I have the card, but decided to pick it up anyways. 93 Fleer Ultra, again, definitely have these. You know, definitely have the upper deck. This is from Hostess Baseballs, Cal Ripken Jr. We have a super nice leaf card. And Quaker Chewy Granola Bars, Cal Ripken Jr. Card 31 of 33. What more could you want? And we have a couple more Cal's. A nice Ionix Biorhythm. As well as an upper deck Cooperstown Calling. Love the shine on those. Now we're going to get into, well, this is the first one on our vintage tour. Gorgeous, gorgeous Carlton Fisk from 1978. But just in really nice shape. And I thought for a dollar, why not? A couple Fleer Metal Universe. You know I love Fleer Metal Universe. The Hardball Galaxy inserts, the big unit, and Neon Dion Sanders. Just again, a dollar or two. And Joe Maurer finally picked up his rookie card. Why not? Figured he's going into the hall. Didn't have his rookie. Yeah, it's got a few dings here and there. But once again, glad to add it to the collection. And I can always replace it with a better one on down the line. Uh, and you guys know I'm not huge into basketball, with the exception of the Monopoly cards and things that I picked up previously. But Tim Duncan, I mean, come on, everybody loves Timmy. So his rookie card was in Metal Universe 97-98. So I thought, why not? Love the set. Thought he was an excellent player. Kind of made for a no-brainer. We have a Brett Beatty. First Bowman card. Who knows what he's going to end up being for the Mets. I think he's still down in the minors. 
first Bowman Chrome Lubob. You know, haven't hasn't uh, done a whole lot since he's been back from his injury, but at the same time, let's see how he kicks off the second half. And we have a Throwback Threads 2005, Ken Griffey Jr. It's a standard card in the set from Donruss. And here we go. We have a Gary Sheffield. Once again. So, picked them both up because why not? You know, I mean, he's, he's such an excellent player. And it's, it's funny, like... <sighs> can't actually tell if one of them is there or not because they, they they both look like they're going the same direction to me uh so i don't know the the guy i bought it from said that this one was the error card but at the same time it doesn't look any different than this one i got from the uh, value box if you really look at it so i don't know you guys tell me there you go here take a nice close look are they both just the same exact card nothing special about them doesn't matter to me i didn't have them anyways so I figured, why not? Uh, why not add him to the collection? And he was an excellent player when I was growing up. Moving on to the Aaron Judge comes in a mag case, so right away take a few dollars off the top for that. So I usually figure three to three four bucks. So it brings this card down to about sixteen bucks, and it's in really nice shape. This is on the this is on the mag case, and he's just killing it this year. As much as it pains me as a hardcore Orioles fan. He's, he's killing it, and, uh, you know, at this moment, if he stays healthy, I think should be the, the easy the easy MVP. Uh, again, even over my boy Gunner. You know, if everything stays steady and as it is today through to the end of the year, I think, unfortunately, for me, you have to give it to Aaron Judge. And, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot this little pile of uh, more own-the-game cards because I also wanted to highlight... Something to look for when you buy these cards. So this is all the same year. Apologies if you get some big time shine in your face from 2001. But there's a couple in here, or there's at least one that I know of that I can show you what to look for. If you're interested in these kinds of cards, um, the little bit of degradation that can happen. And in some cases it can be a lot more because... The guy actually had a bunch of these in a box, and I was picking out the best ones based on how the foil looked. And once again, just 50 cents or so, so can't really complain. And some real blasts from the past. You know, Luis Gonzalez, Jimmy Rollins, Roger Cedeno, Jim Tomei, Kurt Schilling. Another Kurt Schilling, because like I said, these were for... Basically leading the league in different categories. So this one was in wins. And this one was for complete games. Brad Radke. Mark Mulder. Here we go. Jeff Shaw. So see at the bottom left corner there? That's a little bit of like the foil degradation that I was talking about. And that can really take over a card uh, with this much foil on it. So something to keep an eye out for. That just happened to be the best Jeff Shaw. And because it was Jeff Shaw, I didn't really care all that much. Just wanted to add it to my, my collection. So... Just a little bit of knowledge I thought I'd pass on to you. And then all the rest of these should be vintage. Look at that. Nice stack of vintage. We've got Nolan Ryan from 1983 Fleer. Again, they're all in pretty darn nice shape. So, And these were all a dollar a piece no matter what they say on them. Uh, so the guy, the guy worked off of Beckett. That's like the where you see a lot of the book values and stuff like that. Um, but then he basically just said, Hey, these are all, this is a dollar box. So I went through and picked out a lot of hall of famers. And I was like, for a dollar all day, I will buy these for a dollar. There's pops, Willie Stargell. It's again on the 1980, just a really nice card. Him and Dave Parker, Got Eddie Murray also, and now Lou Brock. As we move into 79, Lou Brock, the Hawk, Andre Dawson, Fergie Jenkins, Alan Trammell, all Hall of Famers, Jim Cott, 1978, 
the backs of these are just just what you expect the card to be right all the stats a little bit about them you know and then a little bit of a uh, I guess you, I guess you could play games back in the day. It's not something I've spent a ton of time looking at, but uh, so you see Jim Cott, you got Burt Blylevin, Phil Necro, uh, definitely off center, but uh, you know I'll take it for a dollar. But the old knuckleballer himself, Phil Necro, Dennis Eckersley, pops again, looking very surprised by the camera. As well as Bruce Souter, Jim Palmer pitching for my O's. And now moving on down again. Now we move to 76, it looks like. Fergie Jenkins, Raleigh Fingers. Got another Jim Cott. And here's the famous 75 set, two-tone. Raleigh Fingers and Lou Brock. Definitely got some rounding and stuff to the corners, but you know, in time, if it's something I wanna pick up a better card, I can definitely do that. And at the same time, it's a dollar. Bucky Dent, Topps All-Star Rookie. Very nice off-center, of course, but now we're moving into some even older stuff. I think this is, yeah, this is where it ends, actually. So, 1973, these should all be, yes. Tony Oliva, Phil Necro again, and a really cool Lou Brock and Burt Campanaris. So, love picking these guys up. I mean, I was talking to the guy the whole time about... You know, when I first started collecting, and this is the kind of stuff that my dad would collect and buy, and I never, at that time, obviously, I, you know, didn't fully understand it. I always think to myself, like, why collecting all these old men and stuff like that? Meanwhile, I was looking at, uh, you know, I was looking at, you know, Pokemon or, you know, whatever I happened to be collecting at that time, you know, I was like, why is he looking at these old, ugly cards? But really grown to like them nowadays and definitely something i'm going to strive to pick up some more um but yeah let's get down to the nuts and bolts as we like to do in these videos so the total cost for everything you see in front of you was 89 dollars so as again once again went with my usual you know 150 dollars that i allot didn't spend it all so hey have some for the extra for the next show the total value ish about 115 dollars and leading the way was this guy here, Aaron Judge, Topps Chrome Rookie. Worth roughly $15. I'm sure that goes up and down based on how well he does since he's just such a hot player. It's similar to, you know, I picked up a, a Gunner Refractor a few weeks back. Same thing. You can, you can look that bad boy up daily and it changes. You know, he had four hits the other night. It went up and... You know, if he has an offer, it'll go down. It's just the way it is, right? So, hey, it was a lot of fun. And as I like to say, value boxing is just what I do. And in this case, it worked out. You know, last video it didn't, but uh, most of the time it does. So do not neglect your value boxes, especially if you're hanging out there at the National. Uh, they have some of the best ones in the world, in, in my opinion, after hanging out there last year. But uh, with that said... If you could head down below, hit the little subscribe button, click the like while you're there. If you like these kinds of videos, I'd love to bring you more. I'll be hitting up more card shows this coming weekend, and we'll probably bring you more videos just like this. Uh, we put out videos every Monday and Friday. And one last thing, guys, I just want to say thank you. As always, uh, I'm very big on gratitude and everything that uh, you know this community has done for me when it comes to helping me deal with my obsessive ways. Uh, I truly appreciate it. And uh, it's incredibly humbling to, you know, just meet so many like-minded, cool people. And just thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but I will meet you, or meet you, well, either way. <laughs> I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.